Okay, one, two, three, four, five. This is a test transmission. Do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? Uh, the good news is it actually is transmitting at 814 kilohertz. The bad news is it doesn't sound like the modulation's all that good. Now, as a kid, would you be excited to get this kind of performance out of your transmitter? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, uh, let's be honest here. How many of you thought that this was going to work right out of the box? Okay, come on. How many of you really thought this thing was going to come up perfectly? Even if I checked every part five times, built it right to the print, ran the wires properly, checked everything. Um, okay, how many of you thought that uh, it was going to kind of work, maybe? And how many of you kids would have been delighted with the sound of this beautiful transmitter? You probably were expecting to put some modern rock and roll through it and get some high fidelity. Well, it's time to come back to the real world and figure out how to make this transmitter actually meet its, well, expectations, let's put it that way. And then let's bring it into the 21st century so it actually is something that we could use on the air and be proud of. Okay, let's not get completely disheartened here, but can you imagine the kid building this thing, or even with an adult, you know, helping out, putting this thing together and being very excited about it, and uh, not getting the results that you expect from the book. So uh, we're not going to give up. I'm not giving up on the transmitter. We're going to find out why it's so distorted, and why the audio has that weird buzzing uh, something's going on, and we're going to figure it out. The uh, first thing I'd like to determine before we start diagnosing the circuit, and I've removed the microphone, it's just AC coupled anyway, is what do we have for a tuning range? Right now I'm at 816 kilohertz, that's just where it landed. Boy, I was very happy that it actually oscillated. Let's, uh, let's take the coil out as far as it will go. See what the high end of the band is. Looks like we're getting up as high as about 1200 kilohertz. So I also want to look at uh, what the signal looks like on the scope. And uh, it's not a perfect sine wave, so we've got some issues with uh, biasing on the oscillator. So it's time to look at the DC bias and see uh, where the operating points are on the transistor. Let's look at the, uh, the DC bias a little bit closer. Let's see why we've got so much distortion on the audio. I've replaced the 330 puff with a 470 temporarily because I wanted to see how low in frequency it would go. This brings it down to about 650 kilohertz uh, when the uh, coil is totally in. And it tunes as high as almost uh, 1 megahertz. With the 330, you got up to uh, about 1,200, and uh, with a 150, you can cover the uh, the top of the band. So uh, you can't cover the whole band with the uh, loop stick ferrite tuning, but uh, you can cover a pretty good portion of it. So let's look at the bias, and uh, we have a positive ground, so I'm going to put the positive lead on the positive terminal. This is the emitter of X1 
and let's see where the junction of the two transistors are uh, are meeting. 87 millivolts. So the audio transistor doesn't even have any bias on it. It's obviously not biased. Uh, it doesn't have enough negative bias for the transistor to turn off, present high enough resistance to share the voltage between the stages. So all 8 volts are going to be up here. 8 or 9 volts are going to be up here on X2's collector. So across X2 we've got the whole battery voltage. So the audio stage is completely biased wrong. This uh, 220K is wrong for this transistor. So I would say that uh, the beta of the transistor being too high we need to uh, bring this value up in order for the transistor to turn off enough so that the voltage is shared between the stages. The 220K resistor has been changed out to a 390K resistor on uh, X1. So this, uh, the bias resistor R1 has been increased from 220 to 390K. So let's see if that moved that operating point up at all. So again we go on the emitter of X1 and we're going to look at the junction of the two transistors. And now we're at 2 volts. So this is, this is nicer. We have 2 volts now on the audio amplifier, the modulator. And uh, 8 minus 2 are around probably about 6 volts on the RF transistor. 5.9. Okay. So now we're beginning to share the voltage. And I would imagine that the amplitude modulation would be a little bit better. But so let's look at our setup. We have the transmitter here on the table. And then about four or five feet away we have our tombstone radio. And when I turn on the transmitter, one, two, three, four, five, it's coming out of the, the tombstone. So again, not great modulation and a little bit primitive using a headphone as a microphone. So we're going to be able to do a little bit better than that, hopefully with, uh, with a more modern more modern system. So let's see what we can do with this thing to uh, straighten it up. And the other thing I want to bring up is that uh, it's very weak. It's it's very, very weak. It isn't putting out much power at all. I mean, I'm going four or five feet here and the thing is going out of range. So it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I now have an 820K resistor installed. Put the positive on the ground. Check that center. 5.2. So it came down some. And we need to turn the transistor on just a little bit more. Let's try a 750K. Okay, a 750K. Four point seven five. So it looks like a 750K or a, or a more common 680K is the answer. And uh, that's dividing the voltage between the two transistors. Now it may turn out that the modulation's a little better if you bias it one way or the other a little more, but I'm not going to go too crazy. The next thing I want to try is two other transistors in there, and let's see if these bias points hold. Okay, we now have two new transistors, and I took the uh, the black transistor with the long lead to put in the RF stage and the short one, the one with the short leads, the other polypack transistor, I put that in the, uh, the audio section. And somebody's saying, Mike, you did it backwards. You should have put the, the one with the long leads in the audio and the short one in the RF. Don't you know anything about RF? And uh, Actually, I'm just a kid, so... I'm going to do it this way. Okay, let's see if we've got the full battery voltage first up here. Okay, 8.5 volts. And we got 5.7 here. So the biasing did change a little bit, but not markedly. It's still giving a few volts to each transistor. So hopefully it is still oscillating. 
That would be nice to know if it was still still oscillating. So you can't see that, but uh, on my meter, we have 769 kilohertz. So it is oscillating. So let's see if uh, if the audio sounds okay with these new transistors. Okay, this is with the new. The new transistors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, a little bit different frequency, but, uh, you know, the modulation is still usable, but a little bit crappy. So we've, uh, I think we've exhausted everything we're going to do with uh, germanium transistors, and it's time to move to some more modern components. It's only fair that we look at the quality of the signal and uh, see what our modulation depth is. I did want to show you what the waveform looked like and uh, what the modulation looks like out of the little transmitter. Uh, the sine wave is not perfect for the carrier. I did uh, play with R2 on the schematic, which is the uh, bias resistor for the RF Hartley oscillator. It did not seem to clean up that waveform uh, the oscillator is quite impervious to uh, voltage, and uh, it really is one of those types of oscillators that will work uh, very well because of the the feedback center tap in the Hartley is it's well positioned, and uh, you do not need much to uh, get into an oscillating condition. So it's a very very strong oscillator. So now I'll change the time base so it looks more like a just a continuous carrier and we'll introduce a little bit of modulation. Okay. Now that looks pretty good right there. That is pretty linear AM modulation. I would say it's about, you know, 10 or 15%. So as we bring up the the modulation get up here around 30% it begins to go nonlinear, and uh, you can see there is quite a bit of distortion there. So that's what was causing the distortion uh, with the microphone, and the uh, the overmodulation was really causing some trouble. Now let's be a little bit abusive with it and see it's actually breaking up. Uh, it's a very unhappy uh, situation once we get beyond 50% modulation. So it is what it is. Um, it's a very limited style of series modulation. And just the nature of the germanium transistors means that it's, uh, it's very limited in what you can achieve with the circuit. So I do want to tame this circuit. And uh, we're going to start by uh, trying some modern devices. The first thing that's going to go is this microphone. Uh, once we get a, uh, a decent electret microphone, like a computer microphone on here, that's going to improve the, uh, the audio. And uh, if we use some silicon transistors, I think we'll start simple. Maybe use some uh, 2N3906, oh, something like that. You know, very simple PNP silicon devices. And then maybe we'll flip it around and go with a conventional NPN circuit to round it out. So this has been uh, part three of the uh, kids home broadcaster. Stand by for part four where we make it work.